Okay. Okay, here is the finished artwork. And uh, as you can see, it became quite nice. There are things I would maybe like to work more with. But then again, that is what I experience in every painting I do. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of vivid colors and uh, in the sky behind here. I've been working with um, textures and I've been building here around her thick trying to build it as a relief, as a sculpture. You can also see the signature almost came out, so it was placed the right place, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you always lose a little bit of the painting behind the frame, so you just have to live with it. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed, will, will enjoy the video. You can see the face here, how I have built it, and uh, yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Better in reality than on the film, but that's how it is, so yeah, my studio this looks like shit now, even a bone. Anyway, so... I hope you can do me the favor of sharing my videos on social media, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and even watch the whole video. You don't need to watch it, just let it roll to bring up the view time on the channel and help it grow. Uh, did I say playlists? And um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and put the notification bell on. And um, if you want to support my channel and my work, you can go to Patreon and uh, donate or become a five or one dollar patron. If you do a one dollar, you can see my Patreon posts. And if you do five, you will be in the lottery uh, or the Patreon giveaway, which I do basically every month. So. With this, I beg you a fine farewell and until next time, stay cool and keep painting because why not? I mean, what to do with this life anyway? So, watch the video. Okay, here we go. Today I'm going to start on this little beauty. It is actually a picture I took of my daughter in uh, my home island, Kami, on a very nice summer evening. I'm going to paint this on this canvas, which is 30.30 uh, 30 centimeters. And uh, I'm going to try to make this into a shorter video, not do too much ranting. Stick on topic, which is painting. So. Yeah, enjoy. Okay, here we go. Uh huh. Yeah, it's perfect for widescreen. And uh, some people asked me if I couldn't do uh, kind of a live. Maybe I should have it over there, the photo actually. I have a small one that I can put closer when I. Yeah. Well, I can do it like this. Okay, I just have to measure. So I measure one, two, and a little bit. And I measure one, two, three, four. Oh, no, this, this is going to work. Uh, I need to put this one beside here. So. I can get it closer because when you see it in when I don't see it straight in actually it would be better to have this one or this one over there and this one here so I can actually see both <clears throat> I see both of them but then again you're missing out on a motif, so okay, well, whatever. Um, well, 
This is actually problematic. Let's put this one here then. Okay, like this. So, okay. Now, <clears throat> it is one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and yeah, it's five and a little bit. Have to see it here. You know, I put the composition so she is uh, longer over there. It's kind of confusing actually. So annoying because I don't because I see it in there and and uh, yeah, yeah, I need to change it because my brain won't don't work with me. I have this one here. Sorry. Well, maybe you learn something about this. And I put this one here. Okay. It's very reddish. So, it's also going to be a problem. But, anyway, I'm going to measure the line. Where does the line go between? Okay, the line goes straight between the face. Uh, so, kiss her head, probably up here, there, and then the background. No, that's too high, way too high. All the way down here, I think. This. No, because no, it goes through her forehead actually, so it's probably up here somewhere. It's kind of easy to get the deception to be deceived by it. Here, uh -huh. shoulders, and here, this is now one, yeah. I almost feel like I'm kind of fumbling around here now, because it's a, it's a while since I did anything this small. I'm not, no, it's not a while since I did anything this small. It's a while since I did anything this difficult. <laughs> it's a difference. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a wrong pencil. So. Maybe I should go buy some new pencils. Let me see. Just start, you know, with a more rough sketch as usual. Uh, points of light. Now I was counting one and two and a little bit. And if I see her, say that her face comes down here, and the hair down like this. Some light here. I need to be able to do this. You know, when I sketch, I, I usually, I always actually start with with colors and lights. It's very typical me. But now I need to. Uh, 
21 to mm, yeah, approximately 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, it's a little bit too big. Just be a little bit smaller. I think it was 5 and a little bit, wasn't it? So it's probably up here somewhere. Her eye. The eye behind her nose. The nose crown there. The light comes down here. And just a ponytail. I have placed it, you've seen my composition, usually I would place it in the middle, but this time I just decided to change the composition a little bit. Also because this is a small version, I will paint this one, I think it's a beautiful photo. And I want to paint this, um, I actually took that in like 2010 or something like that. Or was it 2010? Oh, I don't remember. If you just check the file, you know, I'm getting old, I don't remember anymore. My daughter probably remembers. Uh, anyway, so here, straw. You see, I draw with paint. And uh, for me, that is a very good way to do it. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. just approximately get her in here. Like this, and there's a beautiful shine that comes from her body that comes down into the water here, which I also like very much. Her head is kind of tilted a little bit, so. And what I liked with the composition, if I you kind of cut it here and make it have it more there, it kind of lost its lost its power, and uh, I didn't like it that much. I'm gonna try to to um, try. I'm going to do some of the sky. Uh, the thing is that you, you just have, like you see, it's just totally rough. Uh, it's because I'm, I'm not really, I'm kind of a builder uh, without a plan. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a builder with a sketch, okay? But I have to work it out as I go. I know artists that are, that is, sorry, is uh, very particular with their sketches. And do my, what I would do, I will work this way. And I will do this first and then I will just work this way because you don't want to work here and then you're gonna get cluttered all too when you start to want to do work on that. So I will just work this way. So in a way, it's a plan. Yeah. Um, let's see how it progresses. And keep this on point in painting. That is why you are here, I guess. To learn. Uh, I use different blue, and this is um, the Prussian blue. So the Prussian in the, the the Prussian blue is green, and it mixes so well with all the other colors. You can make it warmer with with uh, Kaplak, and you can make it uh, come back and forth. It, it's um, it's brilliant actually. Um, Oh, see, I did it. I I shouldn't go there. I should only stick to this. Well, I'm gonna clear it up. So uh, I need to go down here, so I can. And here is more yellowish in it. 
But then again, I want to keep it a little bit fluid. I don't want to put so much color in it before I have gotten the drawing more correct because if I have to change stuff, it's going to be such a mess. And uh, we don't want that to be. My arm is. Oh, I shouldn't train too much. Anyway, blah blah blah. Um, I almost don't hold my arm up. It's so annoying. Um, yeah. Okay, it is more reddish down there. So we'll pour in the Kaplak or Al Zavin with uh, some uh, uh, French Ultramarine to make it a warmer. See, it's become warmer. What is it? Is it green there too? It is orange and green and yellow and all the colors of the rainbow. That is why I love painting so much. It is, it is just, just kind of repeats nature, and um, I can understand how how important all the different colors are to make shapes and nuances and depth and everything so yeah it's great really great and it's always so nice to start a new painting <laughs> something with it is just so liberating liberazzi So do some of the sea, the water. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll try to just mark it. Uh, it's like one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, Approximately. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly uh, on point. I'm not gonna follow. I'm actually gonna try to make this painting in a huge version and I'm gonna try to go as far I can into the combination of paintedness and photorealism. For once, I want to I want to push my boundaries on that. Uh, see how far I get. I saw this. I don't remember his name. This is German painter. He's really brilliant, and he's able to make the most amazing uh, photorealistic paintings. Yeah, as I said. On, Instagram to him is almost it's almost not human to make these things because they are so extremely detailed and uh, it's very inspirational when I look at myself as a painter it's uh, he's way better okay and uh, of course, I can never become like that, and it's not a goal in itself. Maybe I'm too much of a expressionist and impressionist, but I could try to clean my paintings more up, more like Vermeer. Vermeer is more where I the best ones of Vermeer. That, that is the best ones of, of Rembrandt and Vermeer. There's a greater paintedness to them. Which of course this guy is lacking because he's not lacking it, but it's kind of uh, brushed out and, and every detail is so uh, perfect that uh, you can't really see much of the much of the subjective choices he has made in the form of brushwork. So. In another clip, I will tell you the name of this guy. Um, in the next.
next clip I'm going to tell you the name I'm going to figure out who it is because you should check him out he's painting women with water in their water and drippings and it's just brilliant it's very typical you know um, for Germans to do stuff like that they have this uh, maybe even a culture for it like the like um, the other guy, um, Gerhard Richter, also done some very photorealistic. I don't know if he actually painted it himself or it was his students, but there are some, there's some thing there, the German said. So I think I have observed, but I'm but I'm not sure, actually, I shouldn't. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a digression. But it's like in the gym today, I was talking to this uh, young guy about testosterone and, and um, production of, um, of um, vitamin, D, vitamin D. Um, Vitamin D is actually produced from um, ugh, the thing that is in eggs. Oh God! Um, cholesterol. When when the sun hits your face or your skin, it is actually uh, that that creates um, vitamin D in your skin. So, um, as a cholesterol becomes vitamin D. But we, we went on to talk about uh, if it were two different types of this in the body. And I said, no, no, no. I said, hell, I think I'm wrong here. So I just had to check it out, and you have this LDL and, and another type. Uh, one of them is toxic, one of them is not. So I guess one has to be critical to what we say, and it's kind of the same thing about this German guy, German artist, or Germans. I threw myself on a cliche there in a way. You know, Germans are very efficient and cold and focused but it's probably not really true you know maybe it was like before second world war and stuff but I shouldn't use cliches that was my point and this was a digression so sorry about that anyway back to painting you see i'm just it looks like a like a children's cartoon now because as I say uh, it is my it is that I keep on working on it with it on it uh, that brings it in the end to where I want it to be uh, I only have about a little bit over a week on this so it's going to be a stretch so there's no more socializing for this cowboy I just have to be focused and uh, paint my work actually it's going to be quite a, uh, before small exhibitions I'm going to be in a small exhibition in my home Iceland Kame in Norway called Lines Exhibition and it's going to be a painting for that exhibition and uh, and maybe it's good that I go into this I have I'm really pressed for time because I'm a, such a great waster of time I have this need to waste hours and hours each day on bullshit I think I'm trying to deal with I think I'm going to make a video about it but when I get into this, oh shit, now you really have to get started. You just 
have to paint then I can actually have this positive uh, thing with it that I get a lot of stuff done in quite a short a while of time and I think this putting myself into that zero state now is the best place I can actually be because I have as I say had problems with connecting with my work lately it's probably because my operations this half year but you can't really give in to that uh, and you just have to go back into doing your fucking job you know I mean this is painting is what's making me happy if I don't paint if I paint train and eat healthy I feel fucking great I, I could live forever but if I don't ooh. so it's very important for me to focus on the important things you see this doesn't take much to get something that starts to look like a face um, and uh, I'll use the mirror to kind of mirror it and see when I've done some work if I'm on the right track that is it that is kind of almost kind of clear obscure in a way you you just take the mirror and you look at the photo and the, and the painting at the same time and it's much more easier for you to pick up where you have gone totally wrong so yeah that's a good advice get a good a small mirror and just look at your painting in, uh, in the mirror in the mirror yeah I used hours today finding this photo. I have so many hard drives now with photos and stuff that I really need to find a way to clean this shit up. I could have photoshopped the way the thing behind here because that's going to be a problem. Uh, I saw that now actually, but then again, it kind of explains the, the it explains the, that there is a mountain behind there. So that's a choice in a way. If I photoshopped it away, it might not work, or it might work better. I think it's a nice part of it. The composition so just keep it it's very small this face and uh, it's probably gonna drive me nuts in the end I'm gonna sit for hours and hours and hours I'm gonna stand here fighting with that little nose but I'm gonna try to do much of the work next few days so I don't get into that horrible situation no I can't do it I can't do it I'm not good enough and I should start making small paintings like this a lot of them because there is money in them should work 12 hours a day have six hours of free time no yeah four hours of free time if I sleep that's a little bit 10 hours a day I should work 10 hours a day have six hours 
where I could actually do other stuff like like um, training and stuff. That would be, would be the best. I think I kind of like this now. <laughs> it takes shape. Nothing even near. It's not even near. I know that. Well, I'm going to be a little bit careful with how much paint I pour into the light areas here also because I have noticed that I get into trouble if I sketch too hard so I'm going to kind of slow that down a little bit Almost like watercolor at this point. Uh, it's just the first sketch, so I can feel free, a little bit free. That is great. You feel that you have some. Leverage. It's funny how the brain actually works that you can learn to do stuff like this out of the blue. People tell me talent, talent, oh god. Don't tell me about talent. If I see my first my first uh, drawings uh, no one in the world would have said that Oh, he has such talent. <laughs> no fucking way. A talent for the extreme. Talent for work. Talent for not giving up. That I have a talent for. Talent for deep self hates. Deep pleasure, all the kinds of stuff we need to push, push, and there I'm digressing again from painting. If you want to paint, want to become a painter, paint, paint, just paint, paint and be self critical. Have an objective standard. Look to Rembrandt. What can Rembrandt teach me? How does my stuff compare to Rembrandt? What is it with Vermeer that makes his paintings so deep and mine so flat? To make the colors, you know, to make the colors pure and clean. What is it he does? It's so important to try to understand these things. And if you don't, you're never going to become a painter. I think self-doubt is probably the thing that is the most important. Uh, not become this the type of artist that become grandiose and believes that everything he does is great because it isn't and if you believe so you're not just an arsehole you're a pompous ass that will probably never be able to do anything real so I guess that that comes with anything we should do in life. Uh, that if you aren't able to be self critical, you won't go anywhere. Okay, more painting here. Um, I'm actually enjoying this. Let's 
see. Oh, it's starting to look like a... Wow. I think I should zoom a little bit. If I can. Check out this. Oh, I saw. Mm -hmm. It's kind of... I want to do, I want to start doing um, aquarelle, aqua, and gouache, and um, uh, charcoal, so more charcoal, I've done charcoal before, charcoal reminds me more about, I should do some, you know, this brilliant, as it's called in Norway, it's pen, uh, not with ink though, but with um, lead, you know, the lead pens. But not this lead anymore, probably not legal, but because of the lead. <laughs> you know, we used to have lead white, it was a very nice color, and now you have to have a permit to get lead white, and it's just so ridiculous. I mean, as if People are going to die because of lead white. So what, basically? I mean, you're going to die anyway. You might as well die. A happy painter. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I can't do... I was wondering if I could do this sketch real time. But... I don't think that's going to be possible, sorry to say, because it's going to take time to get this right. And I don't think there's enough battery actually on my camera right now. I need to buy another battery, this one is charged, so yeah. I'll be careful here too, I don't want to do too much texture right now. This this version could be really big, but I'm gonna make um, the whole thing. Or maybe I'll do this version big. And I should make a print of it because this, if I do, um, uh, it's called um, with stone, you know. Lithography, it's called lithography. If you do lithography, lithography, uh, you will probably, uh, I, will pro I will probably earn quite a amount of money on that. And uh, I would like to increase my income a little bit now because I have so much expenses when it comes to framing and colors and especially now when I'm getting back and deep into to producing many 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 paintings at once and you start burning kind of burning through piles of brushes and expensive colors and stuff so um, and you have to have the economy to do that Really that's what I'm going to do. Okay. There's a uh, back behind there. Her head is also tilted a little bit. And that is also going to be diff difficult. So sometimes I just have to paint, have to correct and tilt things more. Like her neck hair. It's kind of tilted. And yeah. It's going to be a. Oh, I know how big a struggle this is going to be. I can actually feel it already. Ready. I'm going to 
I'm trying to get the sketch as perfect as possible. So yeah. So then I don't get into too much trouble. Too much trouble. Leg comes down there, and I painted some white there. Just I can take away with that, just as well. No. It's also loose. It's also opaque and loose. So. Usually this is the time I would have used to sketch basically on uh, still life. But when it comes to people, it is way, 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 way more complex. So that's why it takes more time. Let's see. Yeah, it seems to be. Yeah. I've been training a lot lately, so I'm really hungry. Uh, I feel my body needs. Uh, Protein and yeah, blah blah blah. Anyway, I'm gonna. Uh, I wish I could do maybe oh, that could be cool if I start streaming and just take one painting. And I just stream every time I paint on it. And I can stream for hours and hours on end. That could be something. And I could also chat with my followers. That could be nice. Some company in here in this room of mine. Mm. problem now is that I have to, because of the camera, I need to stand a little bit. It's horrible. I have some new pencils, I think I want to bring up. Um, one of the paintings of Rembrandt we has. I think it's it's probably in reality not bigger than this. Uh, actually, I painted on. Um, can I actually take it in the front and show it or make it finish it? I don't remember. She's standing in water. And looking down on a cloth, and um, it's a very beautiful painting. Please, only large brush strokes. Such such secure brush strokes are really beautiful. And yeah, but I'm not there yet. Anyway. Mm. This is so wrong. <laughs> Arm 
is so wrong. It's going to be all the way wrong again. And it goes in there. Maybe. I'm a little bit out of training after all my chaos. The last two years with pain and stuff. So I need to retrain. I it used to go faster as my father asked me. Well, I feel like it used to go faster. It used to be faster. Yeah, uh, it used to be faster. A period. There is no doubt about it. You know. Um, but there is no problem finding it again. This thing that you sketch more easy. And uh, things get done faster. Anyway, it's just a rough rendition of her. And I will now turn off the camera. some more and you see what happens do more in an hour just paint for an hour you see what happens okay yay I think I have gone a little bit closer uh, maybe I should do this no, I can have it like this yes it's going to be a short burst. I'm going to paint more, and uh, yeah. As you can see, I'm starting to get the uh, drawing a little bit more correct, <coughs> and uh, yeah. The good thing it is kind of a good thing and a bad thing that it is so red here. Uh, the good is that it's easier to see the shapes and the, and the contrasts. The bad thing is that intent, I tend of course to paint things a little bit too red, I feel, sometimes. and. Uh, when I have this hue, I have real problems holding myself back. So that can actually become a problem. But we'll see what happens. Uh, I need to get this further out. And then in. I guess I have to slim her dress. I was actually now trying to take the arm out, but I'm compared to the face, it's not going to go out, it's just going to be actually here, and down like this, yeah, and actually it's going to be thicker on the other side, I think, um, yeah, also this goes more down uh, and yeah it's a difficult shadow I've had difficulties before with that hue because it's gonna greenish reddish bluish at the same time and you really have to sharpen your eyes to see the different hues and colors. Now she's standing more like this, so I have to 
I'll nudge the arm a little bit more back. Do this first. Get that motion. And this is basically how I do it. I just build it step by step like this and move stuff back and forth and getting kind of closer and closer and closer to where I want to end up in the end. So it's quite fun to paint. Especially in the beginning, it's fun to paint these things. Um, of course, when I get into the bigger problems, I <laughs> often regret it. Why, why, why did I start? But it's such a release. Every time when I get done stuff, it's, it's worth it. I hope. I want to know sometimes what the goal is. I think that my goals are becoming a good painter. Who was it? I think it was um, the guy with SpaceX. What's his name? SpaceX. What was it? He said, "Don't leave. Don't leave in silence, or don't leave in darkness. No. Silence. Uh, I think it was darkness, maybe. Silence. Well, anyway, the point is that leave something." Leave something behind, something of value. I think I think painting has, in many ways, its own value because it is aesthetic work, and it's both poetry, poetry in a way, painted poetry. You have to become, I have to become, to, 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 for it to matter, you have to, for it really have to matter, for, to be noticed, you know. If it doesn't be noticed, it doesn't really matter. So it has to be noticed to matter uh, for the people that comes after us, me. But then again, that is not really my driving force. So. It's just I want to see things get done. Work here. Mm, her head. You know, it's funny, she's my daughter, and I can actually understand her face in a personal way. She kind of looks like me. And uh, it's quite funny. I can actually see myself in her. This is going to a little bit more down. Oh, maybe. 
going to be a lot of... Shall you see how much many shadows? Which I've been saying before, you know, what you see actually in... In here, the colors are always diff different uh, in oil than on the photo. Uh, for, you cannot, the camera sees the colors differently for some reason. Try to figure it out, but it's beyond my my skill set. Maybe I should do some research there. Let's see if I can get the videos to more represent the real colors of course they are approximately real but they kind of lose this some becomes to green some to red on the video and um, and even sometimes I feel that my videos are kind of uh, it's, it is as the colors has just disappeared and being a person who loves color it can be uh, quite hard not to swallow let me see that to bring out this hand I'm going to use something background here like this that's better yeah that's okay I don't want to put in too many thick layers yet. Let me go here. You know, I have to work in the right directions for a while. And um, kind of water goes here and there's a nice very nice um, light actually hits her arm down here and it explains where the arm this one behind here explains the arm that's a lucky thing Yes. 
snow. Hot like that. Kinda seems like it's starting to look like something. Something, yeah. Walks like this. Can walk snap. This foot is actually gonna be in front of this foot. Yeah, so I need to move it a little bit like this. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. <laughs> it's kind of a tiny figure now. Hmm. I wish I had Rembrandt skills. <laughs> I mean, swish, swish. And we have this beautiful painting that is called Croquis or fast uh, when you are able to pick up the different things very fast. I remember the, the woman Cecil Cobosta was a teacher I had in drawing school and one who basically got me into painting. She was brilliant with these five, ten minute sketches. Oh, beautiful. But she never did anything with it. She had such bad self-esteem. Oh, and she was brilliant. She was so good with colors. And, and uh, she probably is. I hope she picked it up. I know her husband died. And, I think they and stuff of cancer. So I hope she she has picked it up. She must be I guess she must have been at least fifteen years older than me back then. And good friends actually. And um uh, Hmm. I miss her. Cecil. I want to meet her someday. I have a lot to thank her for. Oh, she's a beautiful person. Beautiful person. A rare, a rare kind of beautiful. It's funny because I can actually articulate that now. I couldn't have done that back then, but I knew that she was a beautiful person. Is a beautiful person, I guess. Okay, 
I'm just gonna turn it off for a second. Now I'm getting really getting into it here, and it's hard for me to to stop. Ah, it's here. The water comes in here. There are some seagrass here. Oh, this kelp, I think it's called kelp. In English, it lays on top of the water, from the sea water. Of course, there's no kelp in fresh water, so not that I know of, anyway. Maybe it will, maybe I'm wrong again. Painting. I need to charge the battery now anyway. So Okie dokie dokie. Let's see if I have gotten this right now. Yeah. Okay, maybe I can zoom a little bit so I can get more. Oh shit, my neighbor's upstairs. As a store, and he makes so much noise in the mornings. It's eight in the morning now in Norway, and uh, I think I was just gonna. Since I'm just gonna work around now, I put this up so you can actually compare it with what I do. Probably seen this many times before. Uh, if you are a member of my channel. I will first, I will just do the whole thing and I will go over it a little bit and strengthen some of the things I find to be important. <coughs> it is limited how much I can push into this now, so I'll just leave it at this. I think the sketch is kind of okay, it is uh, loose, it is has potential. And it's not going to give me too much problems, hopefully. The problems will be here. This will be the biggest problem. Everything else is just kind of, you know, the hand doesn't show that much. And there's no fingers that can drive you nuts. So, just... Now I'm using black, blue, and a lot of cut luck actually. I love that cut luck color. Let's see if I can see. Yeah, it's kind of like underneath her cheek. So this one is up here, approximately. And that one is a little bit under her. Yeah, a little bit under actually. Yeah, this goes further in than goes out here. But this is, these things are really the easy thing, I think, with the landscape. There's some brush here. Um, Work on and, and what I like here is this thing, it kind of leads, it leads the light that way, and um, that is also why I placed her here because this side with the light and this will kind of weigh up the composition. It's kind of dangerous to place her there. If I did a little bit to, if I if I didn't get uh, if I didn't place her, okay, I can have a little bit of a difference. 
but I didn't, didn't place it right, I would have a problem with the composition because it could easily fall this way if I didn't get it right. So. White, which is over here. Um, yeah, there is reddish. There is actually yellowish, reddish, more and more green here, very green, reddish, reddish down here, reddish behind her, greenish here, blue-green. So you have to see the whole thing as a, it's a complementary, it is in reality it's not, nothing less than the, the uh, color circle. Period. Understand that, and you can understand a lot. Yeah, that's kind of my point. I want to make this into the big paintings, painting, where I want to do all the waves and everything. Um, I kind of like doing that. Hope I will get my stamina back. And I am getting my stamina back. I can actually feel it. It is as you know, painting is like everything else you do. If you if you don't if you if you if you can't do it much for a while, like when I was in a lot of pain and it was painful actually painting and painful getting into it. You kind of lose touch with it. I didn't. I. I didn't lose it in that way, but it became harder to get back into it. So you just the more you paint, the more the the brain is so plastic. The more you paint, and the more kind of honest you are when you paint, and you. Uh, the easier it gets, there's no doubt about it. And uh, uh, I'm looking also forward to doing my take fondo again. Actually, it's fighting in my trainer's side. See, I have a <laughs> punched in fight without gloves through the ball to the body. And of course you get bruised and it feels so great because your mind just wakes up from it. It's just amazing to get hit and uh, train your brain on every level. Same thing is with painting, you know. I can actually feel because I haven't, haven't been boxing for a while with him. And my paint threshold had dropped so I could take less paint. And uh, <laughs> it's funny how fast that is, you know, just a couple of months because I needed to restitute for my operations, uh, operation, for uh, operations actually. And, to... and the same thing with painting, I can actually feel that because I haven't had been able to do these very, very long sessions of a very long time, at least for a year. Uh, or maybe even two. I did, but I was in pain all the time. I became became harder to come back to it. So don't stop. Whatever you do, don't stop painting. Don't. If you if you meet problems, just just walk walk through them. Don't give up. Because when you don't give up, you just you train your brain, you increase your, your stamina for 
the mental pain that comes from failing. And painting, learning to paint, is actually learning to cope with failing. If you can cope with failing, you will actually be able to make something out of it. And I guess it's the same thing with life, actually. If you can cope with failing, uh, I think you can actually grow on it. Uh, you know, I haven't actually failed that much. I have fucked up a lot. So t for me, it wasn't really failing in a kind of I failed doing this or failed. I just fucked things up. And uh, by, of course, using too much money and other things that I did that ruined my progress. So it, it's kind of failing because I didn't want to do these things. So. Sometimes I fail when it comes to my paintings. I had this uh, apple I did now and I had almost dumped it several times. I was so frustrated I'm going to put out the video soon now. So probably have put it out when when you see this video. It's a seven and a half hour video. I was actually just find, found that small kind of uh, natural apple that a bird or something had brought into my backyard. And I took it and I started to paint it. I thought I was going, oh, it's going to be so easy. And I had a struggle with this apple that was just crazy. And it kept changing shape and it started to, to fall apart. And I also have a red onion video on YouTube on this channel where I start on it when it's growing and uh, when it's done it's just dried up and fallen apart because you know and what happens when you get into that uh, state where you where you start screwing up or you can't really get it right and you, you really become, become an erotic is that you start failing and you feel like a failure and you want to give up but if I could give one advice don't give up just try to stick with it finish your paintings don't give in to to the no voice just keep on working with it uh, I have seen I've seen people never being able to get past the sketching stage. You see now I'm going to put on some thicker colors here in the lightest areas. I'm going to do that with yeah and the reason that I couldn't really get beyond that sketching stage was that I kept giving up. Couldn't go beyond the sketching process, and the sketch. Sit, look here. The sketching process is beautiful. It's like everything is flow. There is no. I don't need to concentrate to a level of pain. It is so fluid and so nice. And if I could just do, teach myself to do nice sketches. Or painting would just be great all the time because you never get to that point where you can't really get that fucking thing to work okay and that is what annoys me with people who only do sketchy paintings they make these quite nice impressionist paintings but it don't go really deep into it. It's only one layer. It's not like you see uh, the classics, you know, the impressionists. 
that really went deep, like Van Gogh. You see his strokes and the intensity of his his being in it, or the latest beautiful paintings of Rembrandt, where he really went into it. Or you see uh, Turner, that just there wasn't one superficial sketch with some nice brushwork. No, it was a total war against the painted surface. And that is, that is what it is all about. And that is what I want to do. I want to spend the rest of my life battling painted surfaces. And annoy the hell out of you with my opinions about everything. So, yeah. I'm actually making a new channel now for only talks and stuff about, of course, put out some painting videos and stuff, but only talks about um, different topics that I'm interested in politics and stuff. I don't want to mix the drinks, as they say. I don't want to push my political agenda too much on my audience on this channel, you know. I'm not here to... I take no pleasure in hurting people's feelings. Just as I, I don't want to say that, I really don't. But I do have strong opinions about things. And that is my right. That is my human right to have strong opinions. And, um, yeah. You should appreciate that. Let's see now. Anyway, see what I'm doing. I would like to keep this kind of a little bit impressionist to also get some clarity you know, both I used the word kind of so much it annoys the shit out of me you know why I had a friend called uh, author Morten Oehn he so there is no kind of, there is only is or it isn't. And every time I say kind of, I think about him and how right he actually is or was or whatever. Actually, I have a nice painting of him and I'm going to send it to him. I've got my house going, but that's what I'm going to do. I painted him. Not too long, many years ago, and I had the painting still in my studio. And I have no way to place it, and I have a lot of photographs that he took. And of me, among other things, and also other things, photos he gave me. He's a good photographer. An author, and uh, it's nice to give it to her. Yeah. We're not we are not enemies or anything. There's no hard feelings. So it's just sometimes you you evolve from each other, you know, and. Uh, That's fine, in a way. I miss his intelligence, to be quite frank, because he was a very intelligent person, is a very intelligent person. He's not emotionally intelligent, though. 
Not that I am a superman when it comes to that either, but at least I involve feelings for people. <laughs> anyway, um, Was a digression, wasn't it? So, what do you think about this small sketch? Oh, I don't want to push it and start fucking it up. I'm just gonna. I think this arm is not long enough, but it can also be that the shoulder has to be higher. That is this deception. I call that deception. Uh, I believe that if I do like this and I do like this and like this, maybe that was right. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm going to change so much here anyway. I would normally put thick brush strokes around here. I'm not going to do that today because I will probably change this a lot. Uh, so if I start pushing in too much paint, I will get into the trouble. And I don't want to. Just gonna put on some more. Uh, up here, it is uh, Prussian blue, Pr Prussian blue, blue, and uh, fuck, I would love, love, a bit on Prussian blue. Way too good. But the good thing about Prussian blue, if you take some yellow and you mix it in, and you do like this, and it becomes the color I was after. And then down here, it is the cup luck which is a perfect, perfect contrast or complementary contrast to, to the Prussian blue uh, because uh, it is, you know, top luck goes to the violet and as we know yellow is complementary to violet, blue, orange, yeah violet yellow uh -huh. so that's why cup luck honestly is perfect uh, beside the especially when you pull it up and you take some yellow and you put it on top of there and you mix it in Kind of make uh, this micro uh, impressionist paint. It is in a way impressionist painting. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. I will try to keep this video shorter to the point and if I talk about other stuff I would like it to be related to painting so I'm going to do my best.
Anyway, I have the longest fucking painting videos on YouTube, probably. I was wondering about making one that is 20 hours. Just for fun, you know. 40 hours. And I can actually put hyperlinks in the description so you can jump around. And if I do like, I don't know how long they can actually be, but the longer videos I can make, the more of the process I can actually get into it. So it, then it comes close to streaming. Does, you know, I mean, painting a painting, even a small one like this takes way more than 20 hours but the point is that at least I can get more into it and if I keep it to the topic painting might be a good thing for you so here okay so, I think this is where I stop today. I'm just going to hang it over an oven. Uh, because the heat... When I mix, when I, I do the coloring, I kind of mix, I use the medium, as I've been saying before, to clean my clean my brushes so when I clean them some medium always get into the paint and what happens is that over time when I do over paint over paint over paint enough oil gets into it that, I, that it dries quite fast but when I put it over an oven what happens is that the paint dries much faster, kind of superficially anyway, dries faster, and uh, yeah, uh, and I can actually overpaint basically the day after. Of course, as it progresses, I. I uh, need to let it dry for a longer period. Uh, if I now let it surface dry to on, over and over until tomorrow or tomorrow evening, it can actually be surface dry enough for me to go in with a second layer of paint. And yeah. So that way I will get closer. My goals. Okay, I have to be careful there. I'm gonna screw that up. Let me see now. One, two. One, two, three. Oops. <laughs> Ilch. Yeah, it's actually the head that is too high. And if you count down then, you can see it now, the head is too high. Uh, if you don't count uh, every every stage will be a little bit too high and then this I guess it becomes like this okay. Jesus now I'm starting to screw up I shouldn't have done that because now 
D wouldn't have mattered if I just let it be like this tomorrow because I or the day after because it will uh, and this one has to be longer that was the point that's that's the problem probably also that foot has to be a little bit longer and I said that earlier so it has to become all the way down here and it goes a little bit more out and down okay 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 goes all the way down here so she steps a little bit this way Should be more correct now, I think. Hope, hope, hope. So, some thick thighs here. Not that thick. This hand is You see, I'm starting to screw up now. That is why you should actually stop when you're. Time, because now I just start to screw it, screw it up. And uh, yeah. Anyway, fuck. It. Um. Yeah. It is actually hard to make that color stick now. Uh, so it is limited. Which I can actually do. You just do it like this, approximately. And not a brush stroke. Not a stroke. This shit is going to give me a stroke. Yep. Okay, and uh, the hand, okay, so get some clarity in this. It's always nice to get some logic into it. Okie dokie dokie. Now it's nice, isn't it? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I could I use my mirror? Would have made it a little bit easier. Well, I use my mirror now. Where is it? Where's my mirror? Mirror! What is it? on a distance. It's always a good sign. Yeah, I think it's okay. We can live with that sketch till tomorrow or the day after. Take this and just look in the mirror when I'm at the painting and uh, at the same time and I can see if something is totally wrong and it looks fairly okay. So it's nothing I can actually do to change that now anymore. It's just gonna become a mush and we don't want to mush. So okay.
谁呀？不行 ，focus， 呜、哦。Okay, I'm gonna continue this. I'm gonna work this way. I have already put my retouche furnace on. Just gonna show you. Oh, you haven't been here before. It is retouche furnace. Old hold. I put it on because uh, uh, when you create a surface like this, you paint and it dries. It tend to be uh, kind of more gray. It doesn't have that potency. It dries in and kind of much of the depth disappears. But then I put on that vetu chef on this, and it kind of pops back on back on again uh, out, and you can see the depth and easier to see the color. So that is why I do it, and the fact that. Uh, maybe I should put on a glaze on it. Ooh, will I do that? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna put the glaze on this time. It's not really necessary because it is so much in the beginning. Um, and then you just I just start painting over it again and I just start you know uh, I'm gonna work with the with the body so I just want to go in here and uh, right behind her and um, uh, just to get started it is in the background here there is um, kind of reddish, orange, cup lock type of a mix between cup lock and um, and um, um, cadmium yellow. Uh, it's quite. It's a very subtle, very subtle, actually. Um, so I just have to work on it to figure out exactly what what color it is and here as I say as I said before I actually mix the colors on the surface it tend to be down here it is since it's kind of greenish and it becomes greenish yellowish up here the cup lock gives it some warmth all the way down here so it gives it that reddish warmth that cup lock uh, al Sarin actually gives it and um, it's a very nice complementary contrast to the green that is yellow and green and blue that comes higher up um, so as i said from the beginning what i do is basically follow the color circle uh, and that's a good thing about the surfaces like skies and stuff. It's so it's very clear colors, and you see very clearly what. Uh, okay, I see very clearly what colors it is. So, yeah. Um, I don't want to do this video to last too long, so I'll try to stick to stick to my my original plan, which was not to push like twenty minutes segments every time, but more like ten minutes or something. I showed you the, basically the whole sketching process. Not that. Not 
actually fasting now, so I haven't been eating for, for 24 hours and I'm going to continue another 24 because I get some got some inflammation and I, um, I was training too hard and I was getting some um, inflammation in my elbow. Well, it hurts so I'm going to put my body into absolute repair mode. Uh, get it to fix me so you know anyway that's also a digression and I wasn't supposed to do that so shut the fuck up let's see the whole thing is it takes time even doing small stuff like this because of course the sketching process always goes quite quick and then I get into these small paddles with myself and uh, keep paddling until basically exhausted and done for I'm going to tone this down here turn up there is more of the red Oh, almost. Maybe I should zoom a little bit so you can see better. Maybe I should do that. There. It's funny that, as I said before, it's funny that you can't really just paint the whole thing in one go. But it's not how it works. You have to have more oval paints to get to something that... to get to substance. And it's strange, you should think that you could actually be able to paint the whole thing in one go, but it's not possible. And the deeper you go into, the more layers you add, the basically uh, deeper it gets, or the more substance it gets. So, yeah. Almost too small, actually. So, huh. I can actually manage to make this work because it's very very small almost makes me a little bit anxious but it's fun you know it's a lot of fun at least it's now See, there's um, some of the same colors I know here, but are actually in the background. It's just different hues, uh, different, yeah, different hues, maybe different um, colors of. Yeah, it's not so bad. 
It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna try to f when I do the small things there. I'm gonna try to really focus. Maybe I want to go closer. Okay, I'm just gonna paint a little bit, and then I'm gonna go. Closer. Okay. You can sneak myself. I had to use a different lens. And, um, just gonna see if I can do some. Yeah. I just want to show you a little bit. Short. Oh, I think. You know, what will happen is that I build what's behind here, and then I use that to build up um, uh, her the shape, background, foreground. Uh, I shouldn't have. I painted a little bit around it. I want to touch that now. I actually got. Yeah. Anyway. So. She has a very warm skin in this. So. It's going to be a challenge, I guess. Just gonna take put on. You know, I have to do this quite impressionist uh, at first, anyway, just to get it right. You know, the, the glow, the colors hit her skin, like the nose bone here, very thin. Uh, oof. I need to paint this one big, really big, because it's a beautiful. I mean, if I paint it really, really big, like big, almost natural size, um, I can go deeper into detail. I have so much to do. I went through some um, older stuff on pictures and stuff I have I have so much material it's just amazing so I just have to kind of start using it She has some. She was actually dying her hair, totally white back then. You know, teenagers. And now she has all black hair. And I tried to get her to get her original color to just be herself. I guess she's an opinionated girl and she got it that kind of strident personality for me nobody's gonna tell me what to do what to think you know and it's almost like meeting myself in the door you know but then again She's a beautiful girl and she should relax more. As I said, think of how much energy you will save not having to think about aftergrowth 
all the freaking time. Anyway, sure we'll figure it out. She's a smart girl. So. Guess she had no choice. <laughs> This one is actually holding out like crazy. It's kind of moho synthetic. It's kind of it is a is a synthetic, but it kind of imitates the, what do you call it? Animal. You know this big rat-like creature that I make pencils from Moor, what's the name in Norway? Moor. Uh, usually they use this for aquarelle. How the hell am I gonna be able to paint her mouth? I mean, it's so small. No. Well, I have to start with something. You just have to take it kind of step by step, try to find uh, this gonna be time consuming. Damn. What did I do? What did I get into? This one is going to drive me crazy. Pretty sure. Starting to see. One will be difficult. The mouth is just bathed in red, so it's only basically neons. And you just have to figure out the right neons, the right points of light. That's it, you can't really go that much deeper into detail. So limited. Ah. My nose is longer. This light it also hits the eye in here. Boom. I think I need to quit exercising for the next week or so. So 
so I can finish these things. You know this deep concentration is um, so giving. It's almost like you it's a total liberation from anxiety, stress. It actually feels a little bit like life has some inherent meaning when you are doing the work. here I just put on light um, so a lot of noise in my telephone okay Okay, I can actually just see what I did. I just got something out of it. It's just a still totally rough. So that was 10, 12 minutes. That's good. Yay! I just want to show a little bit uh, how I do the dress and stuff. Since I just did a face. Now, here I can be a little bit more rough in the brush strokes because I want to build up this, this part quite thick so I get that nice um, light, the underlying brush strokes to give substance to it. Of course you have to be a little bit careful even with that. But it's not like in the face where you have to be very careful. Okay. I want to I want to train my brain on the different levels so you know big ones smaller ones So 
so liberating not eating because when you eat all the blood is going down to the stomach and you get a little bit more tired and stuff when you're fasting the blood you go into so-called ketosis fat burning mode and your your head just clears up like become crystal clear it's a beautiful feeling many people doesn't understand how i can actually not basically eat for one or two and even three days but it's actually quite easy because our bodies are made for it you know that's how we evolved uh, it wasn't all every time day we had food like and um, what happens it's actually the body says hey there's a crisis there's no food coming so I have to be aware I have to be awake and I have to fix uh, instead of you know, drawing I have to fix my body or the cells that's what a top i think it is called autophagy autophagy or something like that the body goes into cellular repair mode and if you feel you have some inflammation or you're tired or or um, something has happened it's a very good way to restart your whole system and also you become crystal clear Actually, I can feel some fatigue the third days. This time I'm only going to do two days, I think, and that is no problem at all. It just gives me more time to paint. And uh, I don't have to worry about making food. So, and I can, I can feel I am in this um, ketosis now because I'm kind of cold. And that means that my body is using fat and uh, concentrating on holding uh, my most essential organs uh, fueled, like my brain and stuff. So you actually get cold in the skin, uh, get colder because you're not burning that much. Or you're burning, of course, fat as fuel. So you can feel that, but the awareness is just crystal clear. Everything. Anyway, blah blah blah. And there was a digression again. You should listen to me actually and try it out. You can search for it. It's a very good way to keep yourself young, because you are putting, uh, you p keep um, uh, inflammation away, and if you keep inflammation away, you keep. Um, uh, you keep um, uh, depression on arms way. It's very important because inflammation leads to depression, and depression leads to more inflammation, and then you are off into this horrible cycle. And I've actually been there, so I know what I'm talking about. So yeah, you should Google it. Maybe I make a video about it. Uh, I'm actually thought I was going maybe tomorrow I make a new video about how to live as an artist, addictions and stuff, what to avoid, what to do, how to think, how to focus. Uh, yeah. Now you see how I build it? It's funny how it is because why didn't I be? Couldn't I do this the first time? Why did I have to make two layers to get more substance? Basically, probably because it's more substance. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it puzzles me every time. And then you start building on that, and you build on that, and you build on that, and you keep on building. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of, I have so many beautiful pictures of my daughter from she was 
9 and up. And then we had a little break actually because some personal stuff happened. And um, that was a good thing really because she kind of grew on it. And now we have a very good relationship, or always had actually. So, but we are very opinionated, both of us, and we have found this lovely way to. It's like it's like I meet when I meet my daughter. It's like meeting myself in a form of a young girl, which is smart, but I lack maybe some of the time to get real introspection but she also is very good at work she she's doing uh, design clothes design or want to become a tailor and um, she's working and she's training and it's really really good and she did it all by herself and uh, yeah, proud of her. Anyway, yeah, so that was eight minutes. Maybe I'll go for ten, huh? Yeah, I'll go for ten. So <clears throat> I have a watch here. To start using a brightling actually <laughs> brightling that I bought when I was stupid and used too much money anyway <clears throat> yeah to get this water thing right too a lot of things to think about in this painting. And there's a, this is, you know, there's a water line over here. Turn it down and then I'll just rebuild that up again. She, the mountain behind there is not the, it's not a mountain actually, it's more like a, a small Iceland. Um, it's kind of in the blue. Then we have some lights coming in here uh, in the red. And then the same colors goes, um, it's repeated through the whole thing, so. First I'm going to do all the stuff like this, and then I'm going to start to uh, mold. First I will put in the whole thing, sky, everything, and I will start to mold into that again after, after that. Okay. So um as you can see I'm just working around it. Uh, it's just layer number two. I would have hoped I would have gotten the face a little bit better today, but I think it's not necessary to push it. I will only start fucking it up, and there's no point in that. <clears throat> and also, maybe, let's see, one. Yeah, I did that. 
moved it a little bit more to that side. Maybe I made it a little bit bigger. Or maybe it's the arm. Might be the arm. Yeah, it might be the arm. So I'll just move it a little bit more this way. This one will be here. It's kind of the stuff you do when you paint. I paint, I just, as I've shown you before, I just tend to move stuff around until I feel it's on the right spot. And I probably painted the arm too thick. And when you paint the arm too thick, I tend to paint other things bigger. It's very hard for me to see right now what is right and wrong because it's so opaque. Next time I will probably start with with the head and work on that for a few hours and then I get more oversight over what is the right size and stuff because it's so hard to to kind of stop myself from from actually making it bigger. See here now, the shape of the head is more like that, and yeah, made a lump a little bit too big. Maybe shoulders it's too far out there. I kept on moving it that way for some reason. I think this is going to be difficult. I hope I can actually finish it in time because I don't have don't have that much time on it, and I already see that it can be really problematic. Well, let's see what happens. And here. Anyway, it's just the first or second sketch. If I let it now rest, and I then to probably tomorrow or next day, I will start and give it it some more detail then I have a few more over paint until it's done I probably had to bring it with me to the exhibition so hopefully it will be okay if not I just I'll dump it for the exhibition and just finish it off now it's going to upset my mom. No, this is so small. Uh, you know. but then again, first you do the sketches, then I can go in and I can mold it and work with it. So it's going to be okay, probably. Probably. To do like this, kind of measure, I can do it there, measure, measure here, here, and it goes a little bit more out.
I won't be able to get further with it now, I think. Uh, I just need to place in there. So, okay, let me give it some more texture over there. And like this. Just gonna leave it at this for now, for today, and uh, let it dry again. Listen to all this noise. No wonder I can't ever get any sleep. Oh, for fuck's sakes. You know, I always work until other people get out of bed. And it's, it is a problem I'm trying to do something about. It's not easy. I kind of have to change my whole schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to look in the mirror. <clears throat> mirror! Totally wrong. And it's just the beginning, so yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna put on some fannies, uh, reduce because. But some places are not all dry, so I need to be a little bit careful. You see here, it just dissolves, sadly. And, uh, it's colder now in Norway, so it takes a little bit longer before it actually dries properly. Not that it matters that much, but... Um, because I'm going to paint all over it anyway. But it's nice to not 
kind of drag it all to pieces. And it will dry for a little bit and I will try to put on some some light glazing. Then I will work here on the figure, which is the most important right now. Just use the ordinary lazur or glaze. Actually, reuse the um, cobalt blue. This one. I hope I will be able to finish this in time because it is this face is going to be really difficult and it might need more time than I actually have. What? I will see what happens. The thing is also when I kind of get a little bit stressed, it's harder to, especially when it is, um, and that's also one of the reasons why, as a painter, you should try to be. Uh, uh, do your artwork in good time, have um, a surplus, not just of money in the bank, but take care of the money and uh, take care and have paintings finished, always a surplus in paintings that you can actually just pick up and send to the different exhibitions and galleries, maybe even make uh, Paintings that are kind of linked together in different uh, to, to different uh, sets. That is what I will start doing. Um, I can talk about that. I haven't done that. One of my problems is that I'm always late, and I spend too much money. I used to do that, and it's not good. So if you're a, especially if you're an artist, especially if you're a young artist that hasn't kind of experienced these things yet and think that everything's going to be alright and everything's going to turn out fine, no matter what you do, no matter what, how much you think, I can. With confidence, say that 
doing the wrong things over time has definite consequences. And it's much better to lead a life that brings with it peace of mind and finished work than just jumping around having fun all the time. So, as I say to my parents and other people, I had a longest puberty in world history. <laughs> it's kind of funny, really. Um, you see, I'm going to start with, as I said, with the face. Try to get it right. Uh, of course, uh, it is so small that getting any real detail is going to be a hard nut to crack. But I think I'm going to be able to get some uh, nice acceptable details. And if not, I just have to basically throw in the towel and uh, use more time on it. It is very good training to work from the small to the big. Um, and I will do more of that. I've seen these beautiful Vermeer paintings, they were very small, very small faces, very small things. Some of them are a little bit cartoonish, and that is also the thing that is very difficult to avoid when it be, things become this small, because it is, um, uh, it's harder to get these, so translucent or very, very, this nuances that kind of just glide into one another. Uh, I should have had a, a big glass, a big um, Mr. Kyle in the United States. He's painting very small details in his landscapes this goes very very and he has these funny glasses that he uses these huge glasses well, so his eyes are like like this when he looks when you look at him to get really close to the details maybe i should have something like that myself when i come to do very detailed stuff like this Anyway, mm -hmm. she also has this very nice light hitting just here. And in the red. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sticky as you can hear. I'm feeling very calm and that's a good thing. Ketogenic diet is brilliant when it comes to keeping blood sugar very even, and it leaves me in a quite calm state, even as stressed as I am right now. I'm actually quite stressed because I need to finish all these paintings, but.
Just give a shit. The town is waking up and I'm still painting. And I'm gonna do something with that too. I'm gonna start changing my schedule so I basically work at daytime and can have some free time in the afternoon evenings for training and maybe go to a theater and stuff like that. So I'm start changing everything. So, but first, I need to finish this work. And It's almost like a cartoon. So small. I kind of regret that I started this now because I see that I will get into deep doo doo. mixing like crazy. I'm trying to find that kind of that greenish color and uh, I'm using a like a glaze like technique should be possible to get all this detail in. Uh, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't because they are there. And yeah. Shaping this 
surroundings a little bit might help <coughs> Now the colors that I put on the glaze will, will then just merge with a new layer. So it gets a little bit richer in a way. Okay to clean up this place. I actually wondered if we were going to try to make 20.20 20 centimeters kind of paintings like this just to really really push my my skills the problem is that I need to get a much higher price for them than actually I price my paintings basically from topic and, and size of course um, um, human or figure painting is more expensive than, than landscape or still life because it's more complex with figures way more complex But I mean, it's not the size that really matters too much in uh, the most. It is actually other things like how good it is. And I think if I can have that, the reason why I would like to do very small paintings is that it will push my my capabilities to the drinking point my skills sorry my skills to the drinking point and also my patience so yeah there was no spots in the eye there light spots are so tiny that I would need a I would probably to do that to do small things like this I'll probably need a different set of pencils maybe watercolor pencils Maybe it would also be a good idea to start doing watercolors in this size. 
the problem is that time is the thing that I don't have enough of. Let it shine behind there. Yes. This is just wrong. <clears throat> she has no little flat back head like me. I actually hate that in myself. She has more of a lot than me. This is what it is. It's crazy. I have been building some stuff outside now for a long time. And it also kind of kills my sleep a little bit, so. It's not really that good. Okay. Just shake it up to get the, a little bit more paintedness into it. I really like this small Da Vinci. It's actually studio quality, so it's not so so, so um, they're not that um, expensive, but they are really good. So yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so nice to stand and paint and not having that pain in me. I'll try this in a moment. Things are different. Yeah, that was actually not so bad. Still, still not even close, but see that I. I can get the main features, just the light and stuff. I mean, it should be okay. Anyway, I don't want to make this video that long. Oh, that was 26 minutes. Anyway, you saw what I did, hopefully. Did you? Paint, no, I can paint for until it peeps. thing is to manage to even out these nuances so it feels a little bit natural. It mustn't be hard, it must kind of be uh, I hate that kind of thing also. Anyway, uh, it has to be fluid. Sticks up a little bit too much, and this is longer in here. The best thing is actually to kind of even it out a little bit and then just try to pull it back up again, like this, because it seemed to. I just have to kind of kind of blah blah blah. I need to make all the colors just glide into one another. I'm gonna look a little bit when I take a break now I'm gonna look a little bit at or a lot actually at Damia uh, and um, try to pick up some good advice from him. And this one is smaller. It goes more in here. So it's all these things that can actually trick you to believe. I can trick myself to believe that the ponytail is bigger than it is. Now it's more correct, but it's still not there. And when I do that, I start to make other things bigger. 
and then you slide just one thing takes the other and in the end you're just screwed totally screwed up and you don't really know what the hell happened now this is too high the head is not too high I think Okay, here we go again. Um, try to get this face fixed. Mm -hmm. So we'll start here with the nose. Could actually make maybe do it in small dots in a way so that it's kind of small impressionist dots like this. But then again, I don't know if that would. <coughs> I think I'm going to get myself, a, if I'm going to start doing these tiny things here, maybe it would be better to kind of hover over them, but then again, it's going to screw up my neck, and might not be such a good idea. So tiny. It's too small. Red. Should try to get over the whole thing today. <clears throat> Just don't be totally hung up in that face because. Um, If I, it's very typical if you just got stuck with one object in the painting. You really, it becomes this time thief. It kind of steals the attention from the rest of the painting. So in the end, you actually don't get to finish anything because you kind of waste wasted too much time on. On working neuro neurotically on one detail instead of doing the whole thing. So um, I'll try to avoid that. And also, it is of course limited to how much you can see. So you need to. Uh, in, in one setting, uh, you need to get some distance to it, so you can see it a little bit more objectively. After a while. Let's see.
But so blonde back then, it was really laughable. But it was kind of nice too, actually. It's not as bad as I thought back then. Kids think is nice. I need to get a new fan on my computer. Kind of starting to drive me insane. Uh, luckily, I usually play music when I'm not filming, so I don't have to listen to it all the time. It's just, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's quite annoying. Let me see her lips. She has my lips. Kissing lips. Silly thing to say. Since it's hers, well, that's quite cool. Good beginning. Slide here. In this, it will be all the lights and the smooth, strange, cute details that are. We give it its um, give it some reason to exist. A painting needs to have a reason to. Oh, it doesn't really. Does it? Mm -hmm. Thick, beautiful colors. Then I go in. That is nice when it's so small because now I can just, I mean, I can just add in stuff into the like this. I can just drag everything together. Be quite impressionist in the end, I think. Here a little bit. I wish that I had um, a lens that I could go even closer to it. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna get one. That I can zoom all the way into the small details when I paint with it. Yeah, I think that can be quite interesting for people to see. Uh, interesting for me as well. Wish I want to get this. Oh, yeah, that we'll do that several times to get it right. There's also a nice light coming up down there, and it is in um, some more orange ish color, which also is repeated out there. No, it's not orange, it's kind of green-ish, blue-ish. It's quite hard to see. So just, that is also, if you don't, not really sure, you just have to test out different things. And as I do, I, I tend to mix colors on the canvas. But you have to know how, you can't just, it can't be random because when I have a color, I usually can foresee what color I need to put into it, or what kind of hue, or what kind of how much white. Or so you just have to evolve more skills to do that, and in the end, we'll just just. Itself really now I can see that this is too far out. This is this should be about here, so I need to correct that. Our head is a little bit, uh, it's not that far out like this. And that means that I need to use the background. Just that, like this, and it became a little bit too much. Maybe uh, I'm not sure. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. This maybe put in some. Get it down a little bit. Yeah, this one mm, it has to be smaller. You see, I'm kind of just inching myself closer and closer. Um, that is basically how it will be quite messy while you do it because but then I clean it up after I found that spot I kind of clean it up a bit more maybe I let it also dry like that and I just go in after while after and clean it up with I kind of link this and this together and uh, yeah, that's how I work so, mm -hmm. and then this mountain behind there, uh, yeah, something like that. Also now I see that the neck has to be a little bit higher, 
like this. So she gets that feeling of tilting her head a little bit. Uh, yeah. Actually, see what's behind their cheek here. Karma, 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. So, I'm just going to do something with the dress. a little bit around it so uh, yeah uh -huh. see I just work down there now to get some control over it and I like to go this way This one goes longer down on the thigh. Very important detail. So just do it like this. And like this. And there's more shadows. <coughs> Face got a little bit better. At least it looks looks quite well. It kind of looks like it's getting more correct. And it's a good beginning for next time. I paint on it just take a little baby step every time so I don't ruin anything here is very red kind of orange red the light is you know her dress is a little bit wet here so it's a different tone and she has This is why it is nice to, when you do bigger paintings, you can do way more over paints to get it right. Now I see that it's a little bit too broad. Oh.
air this one is actually going to be lower down kind of goes in like this see how we're using the background now and it kind of explains the motions from a thigh and that movement goes there so it looks like the foot is more that this way <coughs> It's going to become a quite a cute little painting. So, if I can actually get this done. funny I thought it was taller here and it's actually longer down so that is how it is you know I, I keep on tricking myself going back and forth it's not easy some blue here actually uh, you want it I want, don't want it to be way too hard so to do some cup like here to just mark that shadow and then I do some French ultramarine on top of that to kind of give it this Even it out a little bit. Bring it out. Even it out. Yeah, it's pretty good sort. And now, let's see that, toning down the background here, like this, so now I'm getting that thing here that I wanted, and yeah. here shape this
Maybe we should just tear out that fan. My computer. Here, this one. This nice spot of light. Here. a little bit you know there's a I don't know why I did that this thing up here the thing I like with going over and over it again is is that it actually on the micro level it winds up with when you do this over and over again you end up with very nice micro textures uh, it's a very beautiful um, small things happening in the paint like these things gliding in, into one another it's things you only can get by making many overpaints. So it has its silver lining. Even even doing mistakes has a great silver lining in the fact that you uh, just build the painting better and better. You see here, I'm just totally wrong. Or isn't that wrong that I can't really take color, go over it like this, and boom, it's actually a little bit more correct. Then I throw in some Hansaline again, crap luck, boom, and it becomes a little bit more reddish, maybe a little bit too much, and I take a little bit of blue again. I mix that into the mix and slowly we start to get more closer to what I'm after, which is a warmer green bluish thing. And that is how it's built. And then up here it becomes yellowish green. No, I haven't got any more white, so I need more white. Mm-hmm. Then I use 
some glue again maybe even some cobalt colder tone down a little bit see I also work in directions so I kind of mix it I mix the colors basically on the canvas Just mix in some blue and then I mix in some green, no yellow, I mean, and then it turns green on a canvas. And that way, I find the right tone by basically instead of mixing it so much on the, on the palette, which it's very hard to see exactly what how the color on the palette will work on the canvas with all the other colors around it but when I do it this way I kind of mix up to that level I add the necessary complementary colors or the necessary hues so, and then slowly work myself towards what I want it's, uh, that's why I say I always mix my colors basically on the canvas. What I would like to do is see here now with some fat brush strokes. I could actually just under understate this the contrast between here and build it a little bit out. So so the shoulder now basically is underneath it's underneath the color in the shoulder so you yeah, get this sculptural effect that I'm after that I love and that is the difference between <laughs> uh, digital painting and real painting you can't do this digitally well, you, maybe someday you can actually 3D print it or something like that, but it's still not the same thing. It can never be the same thing. This is unique. Painting is unique. Every brushstroke, every choice, everything is unique here. So, and you will never find a painting with the same brush strokes or the same things that is just impossible actually to it's almost like you find two people with the same uh, fingerprints or two clouds that are the same you just won't find that in painting It is that the chaos and the coincidences and the choices and the overpaints and everything that gives uh, painting its subjective feel. So don't underestimate painting. It is uh, way more beautiful than you would like to think if you're a uh, Depends what kind of type you are, of course. But 
I had a friend once that just didn't understand brushwork. Brush he wanted to everything to look like Van Eyck, and I, among these earlier paintings, but even there, I told them you have the same textures, so the same brushwork, you just have to get really, really, really close and you will see it. That, that is what adds up to a good painting. Now that type of painting is not really my type of painting. I like it to be more like a sculpture, like Rembrandt and stuff. So for me it's not satisfying to make things that are just totally flat. It's not interesting for me. Anyway, I'm just gonna That was twenty minutes. Bloody hell. Time flies when you paint. Well time flies anyway, actually. Time flies whatever you do. So So, so I'm gonna get the most out of this today. I have three more paintings to paint on after this, so tonight or this morning and tomorrow they are coming to get one of my paintings that are going to my exhibition. It's a big one, so. Also just got a very nice commission work, a big, actually I've painted it before, a big um, landscape which I'm looking forward to paint because every time I do it, this is of course different sizes and stuff, it's like uh, 180 broad and it's not so high because it's very but so there will be a video ad and I will also now try to keep my videos a little bit more to the point so you can actually maybe talk about the colors I put on when I paint and stuff instead of all the other things. Should I do more big think videos? So for if you're interesting in my thinking. You can watch those videos too. Anyway, thanks for watching this segment. Start to get better. You see, there's a stark difference between the colors in the photo and the colors that I paint. But and the head is maybe a little bit too big, but that can also be the colors because it doesn't look like that when I see it. Real life, but I figure it out. Okay, here we are. Just gonna work a little bit around. I need more green there, but it's not as blue as it is in the uh, in the photo. Now in the film, it's annoying. Actually, it's quite quite annoying. But that's how it is. You see, I want to do some here. Get more of the lights going. Uh, and it is in the realm of yellowish reddish uh, this more toned down of course
Well, I'm using cup luck and yellow, which is, in my view, uh, complementary colors. At least that's how I feel, that they do actually complement each other very good. And as I move over here, the yellow and green is working itself up and this goes more and more down into to warmth. So just undo like this before. And, and next time I paint I will start to kind of do all the small details. I should have to wrap up one of my big paintings and get it ready for sending soon. It's like 7 in the morning in Norway now. But my schedule, actually I woke up today about 7 in the evening, so I'm just going to bang on uh, for about five hours more, six, until they pick up that painting and then I can sleep for a few hours. And then it's just to wake up again and go to the gym, do some exercise, wakey wakey, and then keep painting. That is my life. That is how it is when I throw away a little time. When I have a lot of time, and I get into that situation where I have to work basically 24 hours for an exhibition or before I'm gonna deliver. So I have to do something about that because it's not a way to live one's life actually. You might wonder why I keep doing the glaze when I keep painting over it. But it is like... It gives me that new beginning every time. And uh, I think it's quite satisfying actually. See here I'm starting to... Uh, this pencil is... This pencil is not a good one, it's a chem hobby and it's not good, it's going to leave it. It's not the um, Da Vinci ones that I love. These ones, they usually don't lose any here. Not like me. <laughs> um, I saw it start to lose its hair now and I, they fall into the canvas and that was not pretty. It's not a pretty picture. That was actually from Aladdin. It says, I can't wake up the dead. 
It's not a pretty picture. <laughs> and Some yellow, cadmium yellow. I think there's some cadmium, also. cadmium yellow inside here. It tends to be a little bit too greenish, yellowish, maybe. Here I need more caplock and also a little bit of cadmium red. Mm. Make it warmer, and then I just that's exactly where that cadmium comes in. Oh, shit! Did I do? So, okay, I'll have to fix that. Anyway. Uh, see what happens. Now I turn more into that orange ish warm color. Some more blue up there, and that will create some more kind of luft spice air perspective. Is that what it's called when the air and the painting creates the perspective? It's getting better. I mean, if I can actually save that face, I think I'm good. Going to do that today, but to kind of shake it up a little bit to get some life into it. This 12 minutes. Can we put some green into this? And I guess it's 
Put some Prussian blue into the Prussian and cadmium, actually. Into it, some places. Because green, green, it has to, and, and there is some reddish, greenish, bluish. And that is what happens, you know, the, the sky is reflected in the water, or the sea. So it has to be a little bit closer to that. Put in that red uh, into the legs and put in that tar, I think. Maybe I can do it a little bit now. as much deeper but I want to do that first I want I also don't want it to be too hard so I might not go as far down in hues I mean in the colors as is in the photo because it tend to become very hard when you do that in paintings it has a it works in a photo but not the same way in paint Deeper. Cannot do it like this. Like this. Because it's waves. It makes it look that way. And like this. Like this. And this. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, I'll just let it be like this for now, I think. And I will, or I will paint a little bit more on it when I'm alone. And get it right. Anyway, more details. More. Twenty minutes, Jesus. Okay, here we go. Uh yeah. I'll try to Get something going with this one. And I kind of fear it right now because it is quite difficult. That's how it is. Try with the localized glaze first. Kind of just get this down a little bit in here. Then I'll bring it up again a little bit. But it has this bluish tone that is very difficult to to repeat actually in um, in the painting um, and it's also green has some green in it and yellow so it's basically a complementary contrast And the thing is to keep it and keep it down, keep it quite dark, and make it feel like there is light hitting it at the same time. So, yeah, it's uh, a lot of things to think about. Oh, here, this one is very nice. Comes out there. Actually, it comes from, from up here. Goes down like that. So, mm -hmm. and see if this works. I'm now using Naples yellow light. Mixing it with French uh, ultramarine to try to find a 
green blue green deep and we'll put in some more there uh, welcome to my world something uh, try to get that point of light in that's a lot of you know it, it's very important to if you create manage to create these points of light can feel very natural you get a very natural feel to it might be the right word oh there it was actually quite nice uh, screw it up a little bit My daughter has quite a high um, forehead like me. She's not she has not as much as me because I've lost basically at least a centimeter in the front, so um, probably a centimeter. <laughs> larger in my forehead now than when I was her age but I guess that's how it goes you know, a bit older and hairline is what it used to be but it's quite fun actually this thing now oh. Yeah, it even looks a little bit like her now. Slowly. Yeah. So important to get that thing right. See, I've done this one is this one is too big. There's no doubt about that. So I need to the ponytail is too uh, oh, it's too big. And here it's supposed to be approximately This one was on scale this down. There is a point where things start to feel more natural. You can actually feel that the sizes are more in line with reality. That is where I want to go. I'm going to do way more than these small ones. So 
very interesting action. I wish I could get my grandmother had this uh, glass that she used to enhance when she was writing she almost couldn't see in the end because of what is it immaculate dig dig degradation well her vision you know when they lose the cells in the in the back of the retina or whatever it's called of the retina but you know anyway and um, she had this very nice you know uh, enhancement glass whatever it calls uh, and it was standing on this thing that you can move around and uh, this is exactly what I should have taken off ah what the fuck you see it's not all dry I think the size now is more correct, actually. I can actually look in my mirror. Yeah, that's my mirror. There it is. Yeah, it actually looks more correct. So yeah, okay. Then I can concentrate a little bit more about details, maybe. myself a couple of eggs and some fish and some tea because I'm starting to feel a tiny bit hungry or maybe not fasting so again every day actually something here on that side I will do that in the end because I don't want to I mean this thing coming up here is what I do when I've gotten all the old stuff correct I will do that because I don't want to screw it up with uh, into details that I have to change yeah, try to fix the mouth the nose root
this work is extremely demanding. Also liberating. Look at that. It's almost like it's kind of coming along. Yeah. Anyway, we keep on painting and I show you. Okay, back to the face. Uh, I uh, kind of screwed up a little bit because I was going to have this in a in the exhibition. I couldn't finish because I screwed up the face just before I was going to finish it. Uh, I took with me four other small paintings, the one big one, and all the small ones were sold. So that's good. And there's some interest in the big one too. So let's see what happened. This one now I'm going to try to finish. Uh, few days and uh, hopefully, hopefully, as they say in English, I will manage to do that. It is very difficult with small things like this because what happened is that I just, I, I started to figure out how I started to feel that it was nice and then I just was going to do a little bit more and then it was lost and that is very typical. It happens almost in every painting that you on some point there can be an object, there can be a human, just a little bit more and then boom, many hours later you are screaming to the gods, fuck you, and you know, uh, there's no gods anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like, it's like, um, you just see that you screwed up, and, uh, and uh, there is no way back, you can't walk back the cat, you just have to let it try and then try again so that's what I'm doing now I'm going to do very walk very slowly and try to get it right and it's just yeah you see the points of lights are so important um, and that's always the problem you know with these small things I actually need some uh, yeah I have a couple of glasses so I can come closer to it so. Tranquilizer glass. Oh shit. Do you see this? So I have some glasses that somebody had to um, forgot on my on a in a party. I think a plus two or three or something like that. I use plus one some days. But these are a plus three maybe four something so it's almost like I have a try you know you can see all the small details now you know totally clear I couldn't use this glasses because but anyway so it makes it easier for me to almost like I should have a 
glass here and, and uh, so yeah. when you get when I get the face right and I accept it the rest is kind of the landscapes in landscape in general that is not that difficult but it is the small details on the face and stuff that really is going to carry the whole thing, you know. So, yeah. You can, in a way, it can also be a good thing not to see that much many details. That's not because you can actually you are freer when it comes to the brush strokes but I'm gonna go for and her lips and everything that shine in the eye it has to feel, and then she also, in re reality, she's actually smiling a little, almost a little smile. So, it's a lot of things, small things that gives it character. And, uh, yeah. I will do my best. can actually use more pointism, pointism that actually just touches and, and then almost like an impressionist painting just on a very micro level It's actually easier when I, or it's better when I'm not actually filming and speaking when it comes to this, because I can stand more away. I'm going to get myself a new lens, so I can actually have the camera a little bit longer away, but zoom even closer, spend some money on some new equipment. So my videos become better. Yeah, well, I'm gonna do that so I don't fuck it up. Well, it's just eight minutes. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Uh, this one too is so important. Was even the size of a ponytail or the thing there, dirt, as we call it in Norway. It's so important to get these things right because, you know, people can't know that it is totally correct or not. But it kind of, everything I do in this actually is... Uh, if this is wrong, 
everything else feels wrong, you know. So you have to try to get most things right. The problem here is that this is very dark compared to the background, but it also has this light in it. And it's very confusing painting it because I have to kind of make it light, feels like it's light, there's light in it, and make it dark at the same time. So yeah, it's not easy. But it is quite exciting actually. I do love painting and I don't stop. I'm looking forward now to start doing huge, I have so many big paintings that I haven't done finished yet and some of them I have videos too and that I haven't posted and I'm just looking forward to banging on now with my new hips and stuff. So. Yay! I will keep painting a while and I will get back to you. Okay. Okay, I'm doing doing some progress and uh, just gonna try to kind of get this right it's hard because it's so tiny that it's kind of nothing almost nothing can actually move it towards catastrophe so have to get used to it, as they say. Try to get it right. I'm using some very ending. <clears throat> um yeah. Oh it's so scary. Put on more colors. See if I can get it right. Actually, here I have the same problems as I usually get into because I put on a lot of paint, so kind of they become high. Uh, kind of textures, so I kind of collide with them when I'm putting on more paint. And it can actually be quite frustrating. The solution is just to scrape it down and start all over. But I don't really have time for that now, so I'm just trying to work around it I just need to get it to feel a little bit natural and um, yeah I mean it's such a tiny face you have to go really close to get any real reading of of it I think I'm gonna buy myself some watercolor sable pencils for my small paintings and also I'm gonna get myself a better lens some medium blowing down my arm here it's annoying um, I wanna have The most tiniest of pencils is needed for 
this work. Uh, I was totally wrong. I like this actually working this small. As you can see, there's nothing. You just touch it and it's a little bit off and you kind of just lose the whole thing. Oh, there. Mm, there's a tiny shadow. She has this. You know, she's my daughter, so I know her face pretty well. I mean, she looks like me, so <laughs> it's almost like painting a girl version of yourself. Um, I kind of want it to look like her. I'm starting to come to that point. The sun is coming right into her face. It's very, very, uh, very, um, it's a hot sun. You now it has this very bright, Evening sun has a very, very warm tone. And this sun was basically on the height of her face, maybe a little bit over here. So it's almost right before it goes down. That is one when it is on its hottest. It's basically almost like a... Like a... Uh, you know, one of these uh, light bulbs that are very yellow. It's hard to get by these days, actually, because they push these fucking uh, light bulbs that are gonna save it electricity. Okay, but, well, maybe I, you know. You want to save electricity, turn off your TV before you go to bed. Turn on the lights in your bathroom when you're not there. I mean, stuff like that. Or just make electricity more expensive so people start using their head. One light bulb, um, one light bulb is on for twenty four hours. It is like ten cents in American. It's one in corner, one crown. In Norway, and if you have like a bunch of light bulbs on all the time, of course it's going to make a difference on your bill. One light bulb is like 31 krona or three dollars, three, three and a half dollars a month in Norway anyway. And uh, if you turn that off, you save. And you have two, you have. So you can add it up. And you see how one could actually save electricity and money at the same time. Anyway, back to painting. Just trying to mix tiny dots to get it right. Uh, 
It's very important not to get too hung up on detail also because it will actually screw up everything. I'm going to paint this painting big, then I will go deeper into, actually I'm going to paint a series of these. There's two reasons for that, they are quite easy to sell, and they are really nice. So I can actually make some money while painting something beautiful. That's basically what I try to do all the time. So. Right. Yeah. What did I do? I mustn't lose it again. I don't have time for it. Droplings of it, and then the whole thing becomes too runny, right? Too fluid. That is not what I want. warmth into it. It's very warm. Now, you see the difference between the colors in the photo and the, in there and it's, it's basically also, of course it's a little bit different because oil paint and, and, uh, and uh, printing paint is two different things. It's two different physical uh, entities in a way, and also the camera is picking it up in a different way. So, to go over all of this and then I'm gonna paint on another one. I think I was a little bit exhausted because I slept until 12 o'clock in the evening today. I woke up and then the clock turned midnight. So I am now uh, definitely a late night painter. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to turn it around and start waking up in the mornings to get more done because I wasted way too much time. Um, 
I'm actually waking up and going to bed and stuff. So, but it's hard, you know, when your brain is wired to be awake at night. That is what it wants. So it says, hey, you're not going to be awake now. It's morning. Hey, shut up. Go to bed. You need sleep. So I need to do something about that. I can feel the age thing is making it harder to be a vampire. So hopefully I will. Okay, I will not go to bed like 10 in the, in the evening. I will go to bed like 3 in the morning. And work two or three in the morning. Four may wake up between ten. Ten and um, wake up between like ten and uh, twelve. And get some light. Maybe exercise earlier. Stuff. Will be a better schedule for me. Definitely. Let's see what happens. Okay, let me see. I need to do it a little bit of neck also to get you know, things more correctly. And she has this. My daughter doesn't have that much eyebrows, naturally, uh, and he, she inherited that from me to her disappointment. <laughs> I just guess that's a part of me she don't appreciate, but we have very drawn. We all, the eyes, you know, in, inside looks almost like we are using makeup all the time and sometimes actually get comments, they ask me if I am using makeup. But I don't. Just looks that way. My mother is very dark. She's totally black here. Even at the age of 74. So, so I guess I have the thing around my eyes from her. And the lack of eyebrows over my hair I got from my father, actually. If I had most jeans from my mother, I would have totally black hair. And I wouldn't have got thinner hair. <laughs> so. Then again, my brother, he didn't inherit much of my mother's features. It's kind of a clear mix between both of them, really. And he didn't, I haven't lost his hair, but he became gray. And I'm not turning grey, because there's no grey gene on my mother's side. But I inherited some of my father's hair loss. So isn't that just a bitch? You know? Why couldn't I be perfect like my mom? <laughs> she, she is perfect, she looks just... See picture of her when she was young, it's just... she was... She should have been a. She should have been in Hollywood. And that kind of beauty. Hmm. Okay. 
more shadows. See, I need more here. Underneath here. Like this. Not so bad. Adjust this. Yeah. I have tried to put that light into her eye, but it also always comes too much out. So I think I'm gonna compromise there and don't put it in because it always fucks everything up and um so what I do then is that I take some Naples yellow and I just kind of make that greenish color out of it maybe Na Naples yellow lights and you see it becomes too light and it has a greenish type of tone but then I can go in with the blue again with the um, French Ultramarine, maybe I should use Cobalt here actually, it would be make it a little bit blur. You can see now it's starting to fall, now I can go in with some Cadmium Yellow and I can actually use these to enhance the green that is in it. And now I went too, way too green, so I need some red or maybe even blue to turn it more towards the violet. It's very hard actually, but I'm, as you see, I'm mixing colors on the canvas. And to do that, you have to be able to foresee, uh, this became a mush, as it's called. I did too much, so it turned dirty. And what do I do then? Well, I just need to pick it up again, you know. And if I do this too many times, and it just turn into a horrible mess, which it did now, I just go in and I bloody well remove it again and do it all over again. And that's how you learn. <laughs> it's called learning the hard way. Usually is even you can even mm, you can even only use a lasur glaze on top of it because it is supposed to be quite dark I see so it's very hard to get that dark there and keep that feeling that it is actually green because in here is green it is red it is orange it is all the colors you can of the rainbow basically just it is toned down so we can't just put in white we have to put in all the colors beside one another and here is too wide again, so I bring it too much up. See what happens. 
So it's a struggle. It's really a struggle. Struggle. But, you know, you do it once, you do it twice, you do it many times, and in the end you start to figure out, okay, that's the procedure. I, I, if I didn't know this, I couldn't even talk about it, you know what I mean? So I do have some understanding of what will happen when I do the different things, but I still get surprised, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Uh, yeah. I also want it to look like here. Well, that's even more difficult. So. Uh, it's hotter up here. It's kind of much more More. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the end, this is what makes it makes it worth working hard on these things because you know it's so liberating when you finally get it right it really is you feel great and, and yeah so just keep it up It's almost a little bit aqua-like, no? To mix all the colors, let them slide into one another on the canvas itself to give it more kind of physical, more shape and more neons. so bad. Yeah, I will keep on working, so I guess this was almost half an hour, it's 26 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, there we are. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. Work. Um, let me see now. It's funny how I take a step back and suddenly I see stuff who isn't really correct. And I've been working with this now for quite a few hours <clears throat> and I am kind of it is evolving but then again there is a slow evolution and um, I guess that is what evolution is uh, <clears throat> see now the head is too tall so I need to cut that down that looks a little bit more correct. These are things that, you know when you stand around and you work for many, many hours, you just go blind. In the end you can't see. Shit. That was more.
correct. Um, yeah. Because I thought I had actually painted her head a little bit too big. <clears throat> and I guess it was it was too high. Now it's gonna be a little bit higher there. And a little bit more like this here. That is more like it. <clears throat> it's not easy being an artist. Yeah, when you work with stuff like this, you start to realize why why people like um, Vermeer made such so few paintings. <clears throat> It actually is a little bit strain on you when you, it is very, actually a little bit uh, stressful. And, uh, yeah. But then again, it's a privilege. <coughs> to basically live in a, world where I can do this for a living so should be grateful for that <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> what I was going to do now was actually try to work myself more down and um, actually stop. I have been for hours now, been stuck <coughs> on the face, and I think it has, I have saved it. That is basically what I can say. <clears throat> and now I want to try to get in some more of the nice detail, like the shadows and stuff. <clears throat> Again, the colors are more like that in reality. So I just have to, I think I just have to live with the fact that yeah. you can't always get what you want. shadows on her neck there. I'm gonna start doing way more of these small paintings. But what is the point with this painting is that I have to have the time to go very deep and there mustn't be commission works because that's a stressful situation. It's 
way better if I can just enjoy the ride instead of being a total neurotic when it comes to being able to finish it and getting it right. Because if it is a commission work, that is what usually happens. You kind of, or I, <clears throat> no wonder I didn't see anything. Okay, that's better. The more tranquil tranquilizers. So I can actually get closer. It's so small that even if you have perfect eyesight, mine is just now plus one. A little bit kind of long-sighted so when I get very up close I sometimes it gets a little bit blurry But even if you have perfect vision, this will be quite small to tackle. It's a nice shadow there. Pick up this. At least I can pick up pencils now. It's more than I could before my hip. My hip uh, operations this year. Two and two and a half a year. That's not bad. And I'm feeling better. Way better. Almost. Unbelievably better. So that's great. Hopefully, I just go straight into the starts now. Make it dark and it's hard to bring it up again or down again. Now you make it light, I mean it's hard to uh, bring it down again. And you know. So it has dried into a glaze on it. That could be good. Mm-hmm. 
It's a little glazing, like uh, you can just like glitter different colors just kind of glide into one another. There's a light coming from behind, hitting her in the neck. But it's kind of very subdued light. So, so many things to think about when Going to feel a little bit natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, shrouds here. You know, making these paintings small before I make them big actually gives me some kind of way, not some kind of, it gives me a way to get to know them before I start on the big ones. So that's good. There's some more green in this. It isn't that many colors you actually need. Uh, I, I would guess that... I, mean, I remember when I started out painting, I only used uh, color, the um, basic colors, red, yellow, mm, and uh, blue. And I was basically a Nazi on that, sorry, the French. Uh, and it wasn't really that good of an idea because it kind of limited my progress. But it was also a good thing because I really got to know mixing colors. Because I had to kind of pull out all the neons from those three, and of course it isn't really how it works. You can't get Prussian blue from cobalt. Uh, well, if anyone can't, please please tell me. I know you can make some green, you can get all kinds of greens, and you can... But there are colors that are really great to get in the form of a tube. They're clean, there's no mess, and then you can mix it with all the other colors. But how do you... Of course, Kraplak uh, or Alsavin is... is of course... Uh, mix uh, between different colors. Then it's kind of a violent, violet, violet, violet color. But <clears throat> but it's not clean. I don't think I could actually uh, mix. 
mix also in from blue and red and get cup luck. I think I will have problems getting that. But then again, maybe I should just well, Google it and figure it out. But anyway, I'm going for the most, mostly the clean, clear colors. And um, please stay away from sky blue and, and flesh tint and stuff like that. It's just bullshit. The closer I would, what I would use to make skin, not in this one because it's very limited, uh, is. Uh, Ansavine, maybe some, um, uh, this is called Naples. <clears throat> yeah, Naples Gill Extra. This one, and uh, we can pull it up and down with uh, uh, other yellows and other. Um, reds up and down and put some blue in it and everything and you actually find can find some useful colors uh, uh, useful skin tones there I'm gonna make a video was one of my patrons that asked me how I painted or well, many have actually asked me how I paint skin tones and how I use the palette when I do. I think, okay, that's a good topic for a video. So I'm gonna have a very nice frame here. It's not so big, and I'm just gonna take a nice portrait and just paint, uh, paint it and uh, focus on skin tone. And my palette, on a small one, hopefully one that is to the point, and um, nothing else. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that's a good idea. And who knows, maybe I earn two dollars on it. For the work I do. No. Sooner or later I hope my YouTube channel will start generating a little bit more. Just keep banging on. I know people are used a lot of time to actually come to a certain point and then boom, it takes off. The more views you get, the more views you get. And that is why you as a viewer, you that really like, if you really like my channel, of course you can, you can if you like, uh, support me through Patreon with a dollar or five. As you know, with five dollars, I will put you into my my um, uh, Patreon giveaway. Um, but everything is welcome, you know. Well, you, you can you can share it with your friends on social media, give it a thumbs up. And there is also a very good way to support it. You just pick a video and you my longest videos. Say you go to work and you have a home computer or something. Just 
put on the video and go to work. Just let it roll. Through the day, I have videos that last for almost eight hours. My longest ones is the Muhammad video. And the painting the Muhammad painting. And uh, if you 10 hours, just put it on. Or you can also put on a playlist like uh, and just let it roll. There's many ways you can actually do it. And for every for every um, time it changes, video and stuff, I get a new view. And it really helps for the algorithm on YouTube. I think they made some new rules about that and I use that way more views per day with less videos. But then I painted my Mohammed thing after the Charlie Hebdo massacre and I was I think I was actually shadow banned for a while. But it is picking up again now, so Hopefully my channel will grow faster and if it grows faster then I can actually earn some money from it. Uh, I will of course post more videos. So, well, probably post anyway. But So if you can, put on some videos. Think of it as a, as a donation. Donate a little bit of time. And you can remember it. A little time to put on a video, let it roll. As often as you can, you will bring out my view time and my views and suddenly it starts to grow all by itself I mean getting like three or four new subscribers every day isn't that much anyway as you can see I'm working with Shadows and my dear friend upstairs is back making noise with his charts cards which I have promised to change wheels on which I'm going to do before I'm dead. Anyway, yeah, so Please do that for me, put on the videos, and uh, leave comments, just, hey, thank you for the video, or nice video, or whatever, doesn't have to be much. So. How is that? That's all? Yes. Let's see now. Down here is a lot of um, Alsorin, Klaplak. Because this, these two are basically, see the screen is blue, it's everything, it's yellows and it's all these colors are kind of side one another, competing. Here there's some yellow, actually, believe it or not. 
from ruby white from the sun that has some yellowish hue to it not that yellow but I will fix it this one is longer down so the shadow is longer down so I have to fix that too I think maybe It's becoming quite nice actually. It is kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. It is um, getting um, yeah, it's kind of waking up. I don't know how to say it. Well, it's a face, it doesn't look wrong. It's not totally like her yet. I don't think it's ever gonna be, but it actually looked like her. It has her features. And with this that is so small, I might be content with that. That it doesn't have to be 100%. Can be seventy. A painting is also quite relative, so I can live with that. It's funny because I can give a lot of good advice to people about painting and about life and everything, but it's really hard to live up to it yourself, you know. I'm not that pleased with my own stuff, but sometimes I feel I reach things in my paintings that I that I like. Uh, and um, yeah. So I have been working with this now for way too many hours, <laughs> and I think it's getting somewhere. And uh, just gonna do more round. Here and I need some more greenish into the sea water. I see, and I have the same thing, same issue every time actually with the camera interpreting the colors more blue, and I find it strange actually. I don't know much about this camera. I don't know much about digital cameras at all, actually, to be honest. So, uh, maybe I should, my brother knows a lot, maybe I should have him give me a course so I can maybe get the colors more, a little bit more correct. That could be good idea so so here 
I think when it comes to figure paintings like this, I think I want to, this is 130, 130.130 centimeters. It's not very large, it's very small. But I think the best size for these are from 140, no, uh, 40 centimeters, and 1040. Or, of course, they can also be a different format because they tend to become a little bit too small. And again, it is fascinating, but also very difficult. So. And I'm using a lot of work in this, so... So, I've been working around with uh, uh, the sky. I'm mixing in all the colors of the rainbow basically I'm trying to get put the greens and the reds and everything uh, in contrast to each other also worked thick around her hair been going back and forth with her head now for I'm now painting on the basically the four fourteenth hour with breaks of course and I'm really starting to feel it so I'm just gonna go do some Buy some stuff, some pencils and some... Then I'm going to sleep for a few hours and I'm going to go back to painting on this. So, the best thing you can do is to paint on one painting a day. That is my experience. Um, especially if it is a painting like this and you want to go deep. One painting a day is the best. I was actually planning to get over two more, but you know, when it comes to when you do stuff like that, small stuff like this, it is really difficult to uh, tear yourself away from it and, and um, stop painting on it. So. In a way, I just have to learn that lesson. Now here is more in the green, so that was not right. To get it down to the yellowish. Like this, yeah, that was more like it. And then you have the kind of orange, yellow, red, and slowly when I do like this, I'm getting up here to the Prussian blue and the complementary contrasts just goes nuts and uh, creates what I will call natural light. And it has to be a little bit reflected in the sea. So now I want painted all the waves in this. I just don't. I basically don't have a time for it. It's also small. I might do it in the big one. Okay. 
There's always a trade-off for the, I think it's a trade-off with the, with the painted and um, the painted and the photorealist. You know, where do you want to go? Do you want to go photorealist or do you want to go for Rembrandt type of painting? And I tend to want to go for the middle ground on it. And that is the plan for my future. Oh shit. Um, to kind of get the best of both worlds. There is a light in her eye there, and I just, I just want to have. Yeah. So dangerous. Take one more. Oh, God, that's so typical. when you don't, when the manic, the manic person takes over and I just can't leave it alone, I always wanted to get better and then sometimes I just do something totally wrong and I bloody well destroy it. So tiny and so fragile, you miss a little bit, and it's basically off. Yeah, you see, I fucked it up. So typical. That was just a mush. It's depressive. Depressing. Just depressing. It's horrible. So, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing that will lead to so much havoc it's just so fucking annoying I have some hair sticking out of this motherfucking pencil also screws with it Touched it. Yeah, maybe that was okay. Maybe, maybe.
There's something wrong with that eye. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to do this brush. Or busk, as it's called in Norway. This one. Oh. I'll do the rest of the landscape tomorrow. So, anyway, screw this, just have to feel Okie dokie do. Now, I have been working with it for, may the gods know how many hours. Uh, I'm totally manic. I think I've reached some nice things and I will not screw it up again um, and lay thick colors it's actually now starting to become sculptural I feel that the face is basically finished. And I'm just going to put in some of the hairs. And then I'm going to move on. Just uh, some here is coming down. So um, you saw the last uh, segment when I screwed up. I thought I had it. And I have been working on the face and details for I have no idea how many hours. I'm going back and forth because what happens is that I become totally manic and it's almost like I can actually I can if you ever ever been in love and you try not to send a text message to the girl because you feel you're sent too many but you just can't help yourself it's a very dumb thing to do actually I uh, should always 
make them come to you. Uh, but the point is that it is like that for me when I when I do paintings. I come to a point where I actually had a point earlier where I just felt it was beautiful. And then I just I did a little bit more and with a face as small as this, it's nothing. Nothing to fuck it up. And I'm so frustrated that it's hard to, really hard to explain how frustrating these things are. Luckily, I feel like I, with the time I have, I, I'm now going to start molding the surroundings. And uh, I think I'm just going to do some shadow stuff on the arm and then I'm going to kind of call it quits on the body I do look forward to making more of these small ones with a with a unlimited time frame because I have to send this off tomorrow to an exhibition so I don't have the time to screw up and when you're going to work with stuff like this you just have to have some leverage when it comes to time because it's extremely difficult to see small details like this so it's not perfect but it's it is, I accept it, to put it that way. And that is, that is that skill wall thing again. Sometimes you just have to realize that your skills doesn't... What a time, what a skill. I don't even know if I'm capable of getting things like this. To the point where I would be totally pleased with everything. So that is one of the reasons why I wanted to start doing these smaller things to to test my skills and push my skill wall on every level uh, I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and a ponytail really really screws with my brain but So paint in some of the the sea little small waves but I'm not gonna overdo it because then I will go into that same thing with with them um, and um, Mm -hmm. 
just have to play around with it and uh, put no more face no more face no no more face I have to promise myself that so I don't screw it up again because I can get if I screw it up that can be 8 to 12 more hours of work to just to get it back to something that acceptable and sometimes you can even experience that you can't really get it back because you have made it into such a mush you know everything is just um, everything is just uh, the colors are melting together and it looks like shit and you don't know where to go because you have gone totally blind and that is when this time leverage thing comes in because you can, I can actually if if you have enough time on your paintings you can do the gazelles you can do all the all the different um, uh, building building the textures and stuff and you can just take a break from it and say okay I can accept this now I'm just gonna make it better next time and take the next level next time when you don't have time for that not just that it's very difficult but you also come to a point where you start to stress And when you stress, you start doing mistakes. Cortisol spikes. And at the end of the day, you waste time. Mm -hmm. These pencils are really great. It's Da Vinci. It's synthetic actually, but really nice. Uh, they do are very flexible and they kind of feels like um, uh, boar bristle or pig bristle or whatever they call it but I don't know down a little bit I don't want it to compete with uh, the light in um, the dress Uh, 
you see is you know this is kind of in a yellowish reddish kind of hue so it's reflected in the sky Finger or two. No wonder these things takes time, as you can see. I really despise the stressful situation of the paintings finished almost right before my exhibitions it's too stressful so from now on I wanna finish stuff in a very good time so I can actually have a life a little bit with some reddish I went and bought some new pencils it's quite expensive but eh, it's worth it just gonna take better care of them when she takes a step make it feel like she actually takes a step and there there's some light coming from the one a shot into here it's a little bit too much So, so, so. This one. I use glazes, I use opaque, thick colors. I kind of just. It's hard for me to say exactly what I'm doing. It's just a combination of, uh, of everything. In 
you know, dance with intuition and um, stuff like that. You just have to figure it out for yourself. I can only teach you how to think, maybe a little bit of how to paint, but in the end it comes down to what you do with it. It is doing the paint, doing the work that will make you into a painter, a better painter. Now, I have my own, definitely my own skill wall, and I can take you to a certain level, but at some point, there is much I can actually contribute with when it comes to the technical things because I'm, I'm not a technical painter. I am more like a, I take things on intuition and so if you want to learn concrete classical painting you have to go to more classical courses personally I think it's totally unnecessary because you can I mean there are so many people who actually are good at more the photorealist things but there aren't so many subjective painters that actually emulates the textures of of um, Rembrandt and Turner and try to understand what they did just be subjective just play with them Play with it. Have fun. So I would recommend that you do that. Just study still lives and try to understand shape and stuff. And uh, I think you will evolve into a more personal thing. instead of just a good thing. My stuff is very subjective, so... That I know. So is it objectively good? Well, it's like judging yourself having sex. It is not up to me. It is basically up to the viewer to uh, Yeah, to judge that. I can judge a little bit if I compare myself to my objective standards, which are the greatest painters in the world. Not so much. I'm at 50, maybe 50%. Maybe. But it's also hard to say. So, I'm just gonna bang on for the rest of my life and see how far I get. That is the plan. Just bang on this drum and see how good I can get. It's 
very liberating to think like that. I'm not trying to find myself, find my own style or anything like that. That is not what it is about. I already am me, so there's no problem there. And to people who are trying to find their voice in painting, just paint. Just paint. Don't worry about it. It will come. You are already there. You just need the skill to let it blossom. You know, we are all martial artists. It's just some of us haven't done it yet. And the same thing goes for this. I'm gonna make a video, a big think video on this topic. Basically called what the hell is talent anyway. Okay, let's continue painting and see you around. Okay, well, here I go. I'm just going to do some uh, adjustments of the colors. So more green there and uh, I think I have maybe two or three more hours left to, to paint on this and then I can take a breath and uh, start a new one. <laughs> it has become quite nice. Uh, I looking forward to doing more of these small ones, as I say, because I can also get very close to them. I'm going to go buy myself a new lens when I can afford it, and so I can actually zoom into the smallest parts of it. So, it's kind of nice. I can see that there are things in it that I wish I had like more time but it it stands quite well in its own right now and uh, hopefully you guys actually learn something from it um, I, I was actually planning to make, have this video to become a little bit shorter but it is difficult when I get into this trouble, especially with the face, and I start screwing up, and I start um, really fighting, really fighting. I mean, it's no joke. It's it's a horrible fight, uh, especially with the time frame I have. And uh, so I kind of lose a little bit of control over how much time goes in every segment. My plan is, you know, I used to make shorter videos, even of big paintings. For some reason, a painting is just, my videos just seems to become longer and longer. And uh, let's see if I find a way to cut down. So it's not just for the extremely special interested. As you can see now, I'm working now down like this. So why am I working down and not like this? Well, this way becomes very flat in a way. 
and I want to work kind of in directions now, down, and then I will kind of shape it this way and that way, and also have to darken it a bit more, I see. Um, I'm going to start using, I'm using one co uh, color called Blue Black from Vince of Newton, but I think I'm going to try a couple of paintings with Ivory Black now and just see what happens. The blue black is quite good for my more bluish paintings where I want to keep that blue um, color. But for this, it might be better with uh, ivory because ivory is more greenish and uh, neutral. So, yeah, that. I actually want to walk away. I think it. I think. It has been a real struggle, but I think I actually managed to kind of, you know, reach. It's kind of a little jewelry, you know, it's quite small. This exhibition is in a big gallery actually, and this is the only painting I'm going to have there. I was actually planning to have three paintings but this became so time consuming that get it it's that I have worked now for the last three days I think I've been not doing anything else than working on this and the reason for that is the face I have destroyed it and built it up I think even now I want to tell I see some things Maybe I want to put in some more light, but I know if I do that now, it can cost me another 10 hours and frustration. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to touch it. And the thing is also, when I paint, I become, as I said in the last segment, I become extremely manic. And I, I'm totally incapable of seeing my own paintings in an objective way. It is just... It just can't see it but if I get some respite from it and I, I I see them again later or I get them back or if I see them again you know if people buy them and I see them on the wall or something or I usually think hey it wasn't that bad you know and um, I should trust, I can't trust, I can't trust myself when it comes to my own paintings, that is, that is for sure. So, it's nice if you tell me what you think actually, uh, even if it's, uh, even if you have negative comments, I... Uh, you know, if you're an asshole, I won't take you serious. Oh, you know. Uh, but if you have things, that ideas that I could do better, or even even uh, videos you want me to make, or whatever, you can actually tell me. So. You know, these small waves, the way to paint them is, as you see, I'm going to do, 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 down. And that's a way you know, to paint these small waves, some of them. Do like this, this, and uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna do more of these maybe a little bit bigger 40.40 40. uh, and I will make some big ones where I will try to do go totally apeshit painted and photographic at the same time go basically total Vermeer and uh, because I feel that Vermeer have both both the photorealistic actually more than Rembrandt uh, because Rembrandt's paintings I I think is more painted also Vermeer's paintings are very much painted on the micro level if you go in and you look at uh, textures and structures uh, but it has some clarity that well you find it in Rembrandt's paintings when he was young but as he progressed and got older he became more and more sketch-like I would like to try to combine those two of course I'm not as good a drawer as they I'm totally uh, I absolutely know that and I'm not as good a painter either of course but well, that is my goal, try to, as I said, probably in this segment before this, try to reach some of that paintedness and clarity at the same time. I also use Goethe's color theory and the color circle with primary colors as a basis. So that also gives some life to the surface because uh, every surface is really an impressionist painting. When you, like here, I put in so much color to get that light and I feel I can start to reach that light. But it can also always become better. And uh, that is what we have to work with. So, funny how the pleasure of painting can be. I mean, I've been so frustrated <laughs> in this painting that is almost ridiculous. But then, when you start to move move towards the end, it just becomes more and more liberating. And now I can actually play around with all these, all these nice small things and just enhance it. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's uh, so so liberating, and uh, makes me happy, very happy, happy indeed, extremely happy actually. So I think uh, doing creative work is in a way a form of humanism, and. Uh, Despite that artists like Adolf Hitler became a mass murderer and of course it doesn't actually reflect what art can actually do for us. And uh, I think if you don't become a total uh, if you don't become one of these artists that are too sure of yourself, you know, you don't become a narcissist and you don't want to learn new things and you can't take any criticism. If you don't become like that, I think you can actually, painting in itself can turn you into a better person. It happened to me. Now, I was a nice child, very nice child actually, and then I kind of turned into more 
uh, selfish and I would say basically I had narcissist traits. It's very self-absorbed and really very uh, I didn't have much empathy or sympathy for my behavior. But then it's like I painting turned back turned on the the child in me. And uh, made me a better person. And it's a process that just keeps on evolving. I never felt this calm and this content with myself and and uh, I know it's only gonna get better. So yeah. And I'm looking forward to create many, many paintings before I close my eyes for the last time. And, uh, yeah. You see, I'm using also the background. I, I, don't know, I used to have long nails also. And uh, maybe I should do that again. And I used to use these more. I used them to kind of shake stuff up and stuff. But in a way, I have been using more pencils for the last few years. Here I go this way because I want to. It's more in the distance. Like this. Uh huh. Now the problem with waves is that they, they are following the laws of nature. So if you if you don't make them as water would actually make them, they will look wrong, you know, they won't look right and uh, so sometimes it's better if you're not going to go all out it's better to keep it a little bit shall we say shaky like this, maybe and that was too much when you start doing Detail, you all always have to, you have to take it all the way, or not at all, in a way. Now, uh, in this, it will be a little bit in the middle, just as you know. So, okay, I will just keep painting for a while. I see there has to be more red, reddish. I have to kind of emulate this or repeat sky. Even white. And in the sky you have the yellow. One has a medium, medium, So much lighter for me now when I have decided not to do any more with that thing there. And I really have to not listen to that voice that tell me, oh, that shadow just a little touch and it will be. And then it's fucked up. So that's the sky. It has yellow, it has red, it has blue, it has violet, it has green, you know, it has all these beautiful colors. And, um, and I remember the first time I saw, really saw, I remember, still remember it as a vivid 
thing. It was almost like I knew about the color circle and all these things. And my color teacher, Cecil, showed me how to think, how to look at the clouds and and suddenly the world just started to it wasn't it wasn't strong it was just colors were everywhere and shadows and and everything and um, people actually basically see the world in gray not gray they can see actually the, the bright colors they don't see the colors in between and when you start to see the colors in between the whole world just explodes it explodes into color and I've actually shown people who aren't able and I've explained and stood as look at that what what color is it on, is it on that wall and what color is the shadow and what color is it, you know and suddenly they see it and just, yeah, I haven't seen that before. And when you get conscious, it's almost like the world turns from neons to colors and becomes so much richer. So, yeah. Just keep on painting for a while, and uh, yeah, that was another 20 minutes of rants, but hope you got some. So, here we are, almost done, and it took me many, 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 many hours. Especially the part with uh, the face where I was struggling and fighting. You know, that's how it is, you know. I'm a manic person, can't let it go. Kind of like that with everything. So if I start something, I just can't really seem to let go of it. Uh, I think it uh, has its qualities now. Just going to do some tiny stuff inside here. And the sky that are shining through. It's kind of spot spots. So, kind of looks like a brush. And a little bit here. Just to shake it up a little bit. It's a little bit more natural if you dissolve the lines a little bit.
tired now. I've been sleeping basically five or six hours for 48 hours. Only at least 36. So I'm just gonna put down a signature. And I'm gonna let it dry until tomorrow. And I'm gonna send it off. You see, I think I will just sign it KIV because it's small. And if I sign it all the way, it will be such a big. So I just do like this small K dot. A I don't want the signature to take over. Oh, shoot. It's, it's funny, even even signing is hard not to crack. Victor nineteen. Hmm. Does that look good? I think I want to have a K. Knut Andrea Wixola. Very small. K. A. Wixola. Hola. Very small. Thinner pencil. K. Dot. A. Uh, it's it's, um, it's not dry, so kind of mix this with the color. Mm -hmm. So it's my radio that is on. Nauseating pop music. I mean, the eighties were bad, but today, gods. Weeks. This way. O U L A N. I mean, Vix Holland with with a kind of ho is like a mountain or small mountain, and then ho land. Like land. I think that's what it means. Not sure, but ask my mom. She probably knows. She knows stuff like that. She's into that heritage thing. Hmm. 
19. No, 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 19. Yeah, that's okay. It's a good one. So. Don't you dare to start with the face. Moron. Don't be so typical. So It's very dangerous to start to screw around with stuff like that. Man. So, let it be. I'm going to try. show you better tomorrow or to know tonight I'm gonna put it into the frame and show you so yeah okay yay thanks for watching the video um, and as I say in the beginning please give the thumbs up share on social media check out my patreon uh, full playlist put the notification bell on it's really important so you get notifications when I put out a video and uh, yeah subscribe and stuff so with this I hope you enjoyed it and remember leave a comment and yeah until next time stay cool so no thank you for watching this no video way. and I hope you that you can uh, support me on Patreon and give a thumbs up and do all the things that is needed to getting my stuff out there. So check out my Patreon, thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you think and until next time stay cool and have a great day.